final chapter of renal pharmacology and we are going to be looking at adh that is antidiuretic hormone also called as vasopressin yeah now vasopressin antidiuretic hormone aims at what so antidiuretics it aims at reducing the urine output that's how it works so we have two things that we could look at while we are talking about adh or vasopressin so we can look at either the agonists okay those are the things which promote the adh action or the antagonists which aim at opposing this so drugs agonists so vasopressin so pressin will be the suffix so we will be having desmopressin the most important one of them desmopressin and on this side the prototype would be corny vaptan okay so vaptan will be tol vaptan and we'll have beme clo cycline cycling just as in tetracyclines if you were wondering now vasopressin acts on receptors so we have receptors after vasopressin we call them v1 and v2 and v2 is where the adh action takes place the rest of all them yeah they have other places where they act but since we are looking at renal pharmacology v2 acts v2 how does it act it acts by camp pathway that is cyclic amp so v2 when it's stimulated by vasopressin goes to adrenal cycling mechanism adrenal cyclase activates camp and camp leads to the formation of aqp2 aquaporin 2 porin so those are water channels aquaporin yeah and one more thing i forgot to mention is uh, in this conivaptan tolvaptan bemoclocyclin and lithium so for here mainly desmopressin and so aquaporins aquaporins is the mechanism aquaporins when vasopressin acts on v2 so vasopressin acted on v2 receptor we have cyclic amp and cyclic amp we get aquaporin 2 these are water channels lead to increased reabsorption of h2o and hence you have decreased urine output desmopressin potentiates this and all the antagonists we discussed they oppose this now uses okay uses uses of agonists what are the agonists desmopressin and vasopressin agonists they are used in pituitary pituitary diabetes insipidus okay pituitary diabetes insipidus is how the agonists work what happens in pituitary diabetes insipidus you have increased secretion of vasopressin sorry you have decreased secretion of vasopressin because of which diabetes insipidus what do you think is happening in this cases there is increased urine output diabetes insipidus diabetes mellitus both of them you are having increased output here it's without etiology insipidus in mellitus because of glucose increased dilute that you are having polydipsia and polyuria okay diabetes insipidus you have polyuria so to prevent this you are using desmopressin and vasopressin which have and diuretic action to prevent the output of urine so one use S- one more thing to notice is nephrogenic nephrogenic diabetes insipidus this is one of the important things you'll come across diabetes insipidus when it's from pituitary diabetes insipidus you are having an increased amount of urine output you are having polyuria when it's a pituitary cause that is lack of adh that's pituitary diabetes insipidus nephrogenic diabetes insipidus when your kidney fails to respond to the vasopressin which has been secreted so that's nephrogenic diabetes insipidus in this case the drug of choice is thiazides yeah the mechanism of action in short is that thiazides what it does is it yeah it acts as a diuresis in the initial stage it promotes diuresis but when the water level in our body goes down there is the reabsorption of the water that increases and hence thiazides act in a beneficial way 
okay if you want more details you can look back on the video of thyroid diuretics now use number one was pituitary diabetes insipidus and nephrogenic use thiazides antagonists which oppose this action they're just going to block the interaction between vasopressin and desmopressin with v2 receptors and they are useful in scc lung that is small cell carcinoma of lung small cell carcinoma of lung is a very good example of cancers uh, what you call paraneoplastic syndrome okay pns para neoplastic syndrome okay paraneoplastic syndrome is nothing but a observation which you're going to see in case of neoplasia where the cancer i'll take the example of small cell carcinoma the cancer of small cell carcinoma of lungs okay small cell carcinoma of lungs is present in the lungs but it's going these cells are going to be secreting adh and hence you are going to have decreased diuresis now lungs and small cells have nothing to do anatomically or physiologically with diuresis but in this case the cancer though it's in the lungs is affecting the renal system so that's an example of paraneoplastic syndrome yeah so in this cases there is increase in adh and due to this we can use the antagonists conivaptan bemaglucycline and lithium lithium is highly toxic rarely used one of the easiest uses of lithium would be bipolar disorder though even there it's not used regularly because of its renal toxicity and all those things okay and one more thing one important thing is s i a d h s stands for syndrome of inappropriate appropriate a d antidiuretic hormone secretion yeah syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion that's one of the uses so inappropriate secretion of adh is going on and to prevent that or to counter that we are going to be using demeclocycline sorry that was not bemeclocycline sorry again it was actually demeclo i was wondering that actually I think I made a mistake. Yeah, anyway, yeah, just correct that. Okay. So it was not demeclocycline. It, it, yeah, it was actually demeclocycline. Okay. So one of the uses of demeclocycline would be SIADH, and conivaptan can also be used. Okay. Now, and agonists, the action of agonists in case of water toxicity. Okay. So, in case you are having hypovolemia, you can use the agonist to prevent further loss of water. But in case we are talking about toxicity, in case you give the agonists when there is water toxicity or when the person has consumed so much amount of water, it's going to lead to problems. And one more thing is, if you increase the dose of agonists, so vasopressin example. there can be hypernatremia okay so since water is not being lost there is decrease in output of urine so sodium is also not being lost so sodium gets accumulated in your body leading to hypernatremia toxicity so we finish that so we'll come to toxicity of antagonists antagonist toxicity this everything has a particular one so it's important so bear this in mind waptans all the waptans conivaptan or tolvaptan all the waptans have an effect on demyelination so cna side effects you're going to have muscle twitching and all those things so be careful while giving waptans yeah and conivaptan conivaptan has a special thing that is infusion reaction so when you're administering conivaptan you might observe infusion reactions at the site of the infusion you might have inflammation you're going to have erythema you might have pain so be careful about that and cyclin so what was that what did we see that was a demeclocycline cyclin just as in tetracyclines yeah so if the person has tetracycline allergy you can bet that he's going to have this one also this cross reaction and just like tetracyclines they harm 
bone and teeth formation if the pregnancy is below 8 months so 8 months this is the important part that you have to remember while giving demeclocycline if the pregnancy is below 8 months avoid giving this because it's going to interfere with the formation of teeth and bone inside the baby so this finishes renal pharmacology this was the last video thank you all for watching and being a wonderful audience i'll see you in the next video